Hi folks, Rodney back again with Rodney's Northwest Ride and Reviews. Today, I've got a new set of tires. I'm pretty excited about this. Uh, I hadn't really planned on doing it until up until recently. And the more and more I got to thinking about it, I'm like, I really want to kind of expand the, the channel. Uh, but what is some good information that would help you guys in maybe making decisions of improvements or upgrades that you want to do to your own Tundra? So I'm going to step out of the shot here for a moment so you can see. But these are, uh, they are Bridgestone, or excuse me, Be of Goodrich KO2s. They are a 34 inch tire. So it's a, it's a 275-65R20. Um, these are the regular TRD off-road wheels that came standard on the truck. And it just worked out perfect where, you know, I didn't have to change wheels. They look good with the truck already, uh, but I wanted to go to an upgraded tire. Now I did go to a rough country leveling kit. Uh, obviously there's much bigger and better things that you could put on the vehicle if you wanted to really kind of, uh, you know, make that huge upgrade. Um, but the rough country, some people call them pucks. Uh, these are actually a spacer and the spacer goes up underneath in the suspension here and it basically just raises it up 1.75 inches uh, to just kind of level out the truck. So it truly makes a, a huge improvement in the look of the vehicle. Uh, the KO2s are kind of an aggressive looking, they're an all-terrain tire, but they're more of an aggressive looking tire and it just really brought the truck. Now, little backstory, so I did have Tacomas prior to getting the, the Tundra. I put the KO2s on the Tacoma as well. So there's a couple of things that I already knew that maybe wouldn't be perfect on the truck. And I'll give you an example. So on the Tacoma, and granted the steering's not quite as precise as it is on the new Tundra, but on the Tacoma with those KO2s, the issue that I had is that every little groove that you would hit in the road, it had a tendency to kind of pull the truck in that direction. Well, fortunately it doesn't do this on the new Tundra. The first thing that I noticed with the new Tundra is that it, it seems like it has a much more planted feel. So it seems to track better on the road, uh, going through corners, the original tires that I had were the Falcon Wild Peaks. And those Falcon Wild Peaks, uh, everybody says are a great tire. Uh, and I'm sure that they are, but the tires that they make for Toyota specific vehicles, uh, the, the new Tundra, they also have the uh, Falcon Wild Peak on the new Tundra TRD Pro. Those tires are not the same exact tires that you would actually get on, uh, like for instance, if you were to go to a local tire store and buy those, ve those tires. So, uh, with that being said, the tires that were on the truck, I always felt like the sidewall was really uh, kind of lightweight. And so when I would go into a corner, I felt a lot of body roll on the truck and I couldn't tell whether it was the actual suspension on the truck or just the tires. I kind of assumed that it might be the tire. So the first thing that I noticed is cornering with the new KO2s, the truck handles great. It doesn't roll in the corners like it used to, uh, which I'm really impressed with. Um, as far as uh, fuel economy, and that's where you're gonna, you're gonna feel that whammy. Uh, so I knew that I would lose a little bit of fuel economy. Um, I went from about 19 and a half to 20 miles per gallon out of the highway. Well, unfortunately I'm getting 16 with the new tires. Uh, so that's one of the things to kind of keep in mind. So you wanna keep in mind that you are gonna lose a little fuel economy. So it's that trade-off, you know, do you want better traction? Or, you know, whether you be out in the snow, in the mud, uh, you want just better handling capabilities with your cornering. Uh, is it enough to give up that additional fuel economy? I drive a lot of miles. I was really thinking about going to a 35 inch tire instead of the 34s that I have on here now. Two things stopped me. Number one, I knew that I was gonna lose even more fuel economy. But then the second thing is the 35s were an additional $200 per tire uh, over what I paid for these 34s. So, you know, there's a lot of things to consider. I know there's a lot of research to be done out there. Um, but, you know, kind of think about those types of things, you know, Yes, the truck looks great. Yes, it handles better. Yes, it's got a lot better traction in the snow if that's what you're looking for. Uh, but there is also that trade-off too. So, you know, I'm gonna step out of the shot again here. Just take a look at it. Uh, if you guys have any questions, uh, I've gotten a lot of questions on the running boards. Those are the cast aluminum TRD uh, running boards. So if anybody needs help finding those, I'd be more than happy to help. Uh, but, you know, I definitely love the look. I love the way it handles. Uh, in town, I haven't lost quite as much fuel economy as what I did out on the highway, and that's kind of funny. Um, but, you know, they obviously are a much heavier tire. So these tires uh, weigh around 58 pounds. Uh, so that's definitely something that, you know, 
detracts from your fuel economy. So uh, I want to give you a real quick review uh, on, on inventory update. So we just got our last round of allocations in, came in last week, and we saw more allocations in this last round of hard to get vehicles. Uh, now we didn't see any 1794 edition, that still uh, seems to be really hard to get, uh, but we did get a lot more hybrid models. We got a lot more limited platinum, um, you know, on the regular gas version. And some of those hard to find features, things like rear, right, or rear air right suspension, um, you know, panorama view, panoramic sunroof, you know, those types of things. We saw a lot more of those features on the, on the last round of allocation. So that's something to kind of uh, be excited about. Uh, we as salespeople, obviously those are the trucks that people are looking for. And you as a viewers and potential customers waiting on a truck, uh, that's something that you want to know to make sure that your truck gets built quicker. Feel free to uh, send me your VIN number. I'd be more than happy to check the status on it. One thing I keep seeing here recently over and over, excuse me, the, uh, the VIN number that people are sending me. So let's say for instance, they put a deposit on the vehicle, they know their truck's gonna get built or it has already been built and they're sending me the temporary VIN number that's assigned to the truck when it's first allocated. Uh, if that truck has already been built, they will refresh it and go from the temporary VIN number to the permanent VIN number. And so that permanent VIN number and I'm gonna back up for a second. The temporary VIN number has a letter in the last six digits of the VIN. If you see a letter in that last six digits, that means it's a temporary VIN number. The permanent VIN number does not have that. So if your truck has already been built, you may see, check with your dealership, see if they actually have a, a change in VIN number so that you can provide me with the right one. If I try to use the temporary VIN number in the beginning and your truck's already been built, it's not gonna show me any information. So thanks again for your uh, watching the video. Take the time to like and subscribe, share this with your friends, and like I said, send me your VIN number. I'd be more than happy to get you an updated status. Thanks for watching.